With a challenging economy in Europe and US and changing job trends, how do you strategize and adapt to the change? Is there any process that you follow? Um, well, actually, our career uh, coaches or the career team members all have specific areas, sort of like journalists that have specific beats that they report on. Our career uh, development staff have specific areas. So one has maybe consultancy as an area, one will have finance as an area. You know, so they tend to have industries and, and job areas under one person, which means that that person can really maintain the relationships within that industry. They're very clued up with alumni that are in those industries. Uh, they're very clued up with company representatives, uh, company recruiters in those industries. So in that sense, they can really focus on that. And it's really a, a matter of looking, okay, what type of industry is it and advising our students in that regard. Um, in certain industries, you would need to apply online for a job before they'll even speak to you, really. In some other industries, actually, the way that's best to do it is to get one of our alumni to invite you to the Friday evening drinks because it's really at these type of events where all the conversations happen and and everything in between, right? So it's a very personalized process depending on your industry, depending on where you want to go. And our career development center is constantly looking at, okay, which industries interview in which way. Also, the way you would present a CV in the U.S. versus the way you're going to present a CV in Germany might be very different. Uh, the way you'll interview with uh, the German office versus the Dutch office versus the South African office might also be very different. And that's also something that our Career Development Center actively ensure that they stay on top of through conversations with alumni, through feedback that they receive from both students and recruiters and um, so it's really a matter of making sure that we stay on top of the trends that we stay on top of what's happening I think the network is the key thing there as well um, sometimes company will, companies will have a higher freeze but through our relationships we might hear that they are still accepting some contract works uh, so our students might not secure immediate permanent positions but there might be some contract or consultancy work that allows them a foot in the door or some industries might not be hiring but they are taking interns so again that could be a different way for our students to get into those companies and of course we have recruiters coming to campus all the time. We have an annual careers event. Another good example, for instance, is um, we've co-branded with LBS and INSEAD, um, and we are hosting a careers in Asia fair that's taking place in London in November. It's the first year we're doing it, and actually RSM, our career development center, was one of the pioneers in this where we realize recruiters are looking for MBAs to work in Asia, but the Asian recruiters don't always have the resources to reach out to all these schools to be able to showcase their companies on an individual basis. So that's why we decided it's a win-win if we get a pool of talented MBAs from a few top European schools uh, together in the same room and the recruiters can come and showcase their companies and the conversations go from there. Who is leading the RSM MBA career service team? Uh, that is my colleague, Yuk Elements. He's our Director of Career Services. And we have, let me count, about six uh, staff members that work under him, that work with counseling, uh, company visits, getting recruiters to campus, and so forth. Visit f1gmat.com to get more information about RSM MBA and other leading MBA programs.